Thank you, Lord. Everybody realize that today is the first day of autumn? Is it? Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, I don't know cool what my this house morning. is. I don't know what you know. It's a Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This last week, we began Revelation 17. And uh, the first verse there says, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Unto me, come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many, many waters. And so last week we talked about that great whore. Uh, it says in verse 5 that she has upon her forehead a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And as I was preparing this week, I was thinking, I didn't talk about why is she called Babylon? So I want to talk about that. And I want to talk about some of the attributes because um, we, we talked about how the angel had said to John that, um, when he, in verse 7, the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. This is a mystery, but the angel said, uh, I'm going to tell you. There's some, there's some attributes that we need to seriously look at to see, to, to determine, you know, we make judgments ourselves, we uh, gather or glean information, and then we come to a conclusion. And um, so one of the things is that her, her name is Babylon. And um, so I want to take you back into Genesis, Genesis chapter 10. You know, some things, we don't realize it, they have been around since the beginning. It, it's like Satan. You know, uh, Isaiah 14 talks about him, says, uh, how art thou fallen, O Lucifer? And, um, but Satan was a fallen creature when he was in the garden there uh, beguiling Eve and talking with her. And, um, but this Babylon, I, I want to go to chapter 10 in Genesis because it, it talks in there uh, about a man named Nimrod. Does that name sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it says here in Genesis 10, 10, 10. Oh, that, that's where it talks about Babel. But um, verse 8, And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, where, for it was said, Even Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. That he had a reputation. And then on verse 10, it says, And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And mine has a, a footnote on that that says uh, Babylon. So we connect Babel yeah. with Babylon. Wow. Uh, it, it says, And the beginning of his kingdom, that's Genesis 10.10, 10, was Babel. And Erech and Akkad, Kalna, in the land of Shinar. Now, uh, also, looking over at Genesis 11, you know, Genesis 10, then Genesis 11, the first verse, it says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a, a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And, and this is where, uh, I'm not going to read it all to you, but if you look at verse 4, um, they decided to make a tower. Uh, verse Genesis 11, 4 says, And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we scatter abroad the face of the earth. 
Well, you know, as you read on there, that um, the Lord came down, looked at all they were doing. Um, of course, God is omnipresent and he's omniscient. He already knew what they were doing, but that's what the scripture said, that the Lord came down and he said, and verse six, that the people is one and they all have one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So the Lord's looking at what they're doing. And verse 7 says, Go to, let us go down, and con there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Uh, verse 9 says, Therefore is the name of it called, ba at, it looks like the pronoun, I always have called it Babel. In fact, I, probably we all have because that's where we get the word babbling. Mm -hmm. Like when you don't understand somebody and it just seems like they're babbling. Well, it comes from that word, but mine has the pronunciation that says Babel. And, and it says here that that word means confusion. And, and the reason it says because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now, I'm reading that to you so that you will see that Babylon has existed from the early days of Genesis, right? Oh, and in fact, my Bible has a, like a, a timeline that shows when these things occurred. And it says this happened in 22... 18 BC. So add 2218 to 2021, and you, you're looking at basically a little more than 4,000 years ago, right? Okay, so Babylon has been in existence for a very, very long time. They even have an application that you can buy on your phone or an app or that will teach you different languages fast. And it's oh, called Babel. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard that in a long time. Of course, I, I really haven't watched too much TV to be watching ads. Um, but I, I see, and, and we'll, we'll look, I, I, some of those scripture verses that I want to give to you tonight is from the book of Daniel. And you know that Daniel was one of those young Hebrew boys that was carried away captive mm -hmm. when Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, the king of Babylon, see you see it in in his time, right? Mm -hmm. And and that occurred in 607 BC. So you, you see that it's that spirit is still at work. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I um, bring this out is because we're looking at the end time here. As, as we're studying in the book of Revelation, we're looking at those things that are prophesied of during the great tribulation period. Um, the judgment of the, this whore, this Babylon, has not yet occurred. It has not occurred because uh, I, at least I have never heard any other um, teacher, biblical teacher, talk that this has already occurred. In fact, I think, you know, scripture says that when, when Jesus appears, every eye is going to um, see his coming. I think that most everyone on earth will be aware of the judgment of this harlot, this Babylon. Yeah. Uh, and I'll bring that out here in just a minute. One thing I want you to realize is that you and I, and you know, <laughs> you and I know that we're mortals, mm -hmm. right? Mortals meaning that we are subject to death. Uh, we look forward to the coming of the Lord because 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51, 52 in that area at that time, it says, at the sound of the last trump. The last trump, we're talking about the trumpets of God during the tribulation period. The last one is the seventh one. That's when this mortal 
puts on immortality. This corruptible, because this body is subject to corruption. You and I know that because we're getting older. We've got our hairs turning white. You know, all the signs are here. And, um, but we look forward to the day of putting on incorruption. Yes. We're going to have a body like Jesus. Thank God. Praise God. Yes, that is a wonderful thing. But spirits, and when I say spirits, uh, I'm talking angels and demons. Um, angels are, are described in the word as ministering spirits. Mm -hmm. the, the demons, devils, whatever you want to call them, are fallen angels. Uh, when we studied Revelation 12, it talked about Satan being um, the the serpent, the dragon, that uh, his tail drew a third of the stars, which refers to fallen angels. And um, they're invisible, right? Because the spirit has not flesh and blood. So they have to be like disembodied spirits. Right. But they can make appearance because right. I, I want to, um, I'm going over to the book of Daniel. I, I want to show you in Daniel 10. Um, Daniel was a man of visions and he prayed about them. And in, in the book of Daniel 10, in chapter 10, it, it says that he had fasted for 21 days. There's a particular fast there. If you look at, at 10, three, where he says, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth neither did I anoint myself at all until three whole weeks were fulfilled. Okay, that's that's what you call a Daniel fast. So, you know, some people fast various things. Mm -hmm. and fasting means like you abstain from eating meats mm -hmm. or a particular drink or sweet breads, what, whatever. Um, and then it says at the end of that time, uh, there appeared um, an angel. It, it was um, it, because uh, when he he saw it, um, look at verse 5. It says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. His body was like the barrel and his face as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire and his arms and feet like in color to polished brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Now, that's not a human being, okay? That's what I call an angel. Okay, and an angel is a spirit uh, because... Um, what I wanted to point out here in Daniel 10, if, if you look at verses 12 and 13. Um, then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten that thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. He, he's on the mess. Angel actually means messenger, right? He has a message to Daniel from the Lord. and But he says in verse 13, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. That's twenty-one days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now, when he's talking about the prince of the, of the kingdom of Persia, He's not talking, see, Persia is a country, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, and Persia is the old time name of modern Iran. That's why it's really important that we look at these old names and try to determine what their modern day names are so we know who the enemies are or those countries that are going to become manifest in these last days. Right. Okay, so um, the, 
this angel was a fighting angel and he was fighting against that spirit that is over the kingdom of Persia. And Michael, Michael's known as an archangel. That, that means he's a high up. He's a hierarchy. He's a, a, one of the chief angels. Okay. And, and um, I'm bringing that out to you because see, my, we see Michael there in uh, chapter 10, right? That's um, about 538 BC. And then uh, when you get over to chapter 12 of, of Daniel, it says, this is the first verse in Daniel 12, 1. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which stands for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. That's very important that you make sure your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's utmost. And Michael, it says, he see, he's, here he's, Hundreds of years before BC, right before before Christ, and here we're already 2021 into the other side of our Lord's, mm -hmm. and um, Michael's going to stand in the day of tribulation and stand up and be fighting for the saints of God. Do you see that spirits? Spirits are not subject to death like you and I are. Um, if the Lord tarries, we're all going to go by the way of death. You know, Ecclesiastes says there's a time to be born and a time to die. Hebrews um, chapter 9 there at the end of that, that chapter, it says it's appointed and see, appointed. That means we all have an appointment. It's appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. I'm glad it didn't say every man. That's right. Because it, some of us will be alive. That's right. Counts. Didn't say every man was going to die. That's right. That's something to remember in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at, at verse 13. It says, the, uh, I'm cutting it down to a small portion. It says, uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain, see, that tells us there will be some Christians still alive during that time when the Lord comes to gather his saints together, okay? I, I hope everybody understands yeah. that. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Did it say which angel came to Daniel? It didn't, did give his name. didn't give his name. It did it. not give yeah, his well, name. It could have been Gabriel or it could have been... Uh, you know what? There are a lot yeah. <laughs> of angels. Right. In fact, that's, that is something that we need to remember. When you feel like you're all alone, you are not alone. Because the scripture says that he has given his angels charge over us. Yeah, remember yeah. this too. That in Revelation 12, when Lucifer fell and, and it says that his tail drew a third of the stars, that means that there are two-thirds of the angels still that remain in the presence of the Lord and beside us, going to and fro upon the earth, doing as the Lord has commanded them to do. And there, some of them are, are really fighting for you. Praise God. And for your children, don't forget yes. your kids, because um, I'm thankful for that. Amen. And your grandchildren. Amen. Okay, um, so one more, um, talking about spirits. Uh, in the book of Ephesians, in the second chapter, it says this. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 1 and 2, it says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. 
wherein, this is verse 2, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's not a good angel, okay? This is like one of those, like the prince of Persia, or might be the prince of the United States, mm -hmm. or, um, but listen to this. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. You know, we've all had our past conversation. That's the next verse there in verse 3. Um, I'm thankful for the saving grace of our Lord. How he's drawn us to himself. And we can ask him to forgive us our sins. We have a repented heart that we really don't want to do the things that we used to do. And let me tell you this, if you're in bondage to drugs or alcohol or some kind of an addiction that has been keeping you from serving the Lord, you pray about it and the Lord will give you deliverance because he came to set the captives free. He, he, he wants to. Okay, I brought all that out so that you would know that Babylon has existed from the beginning, so to say, because Genesis actually means beginning. Mm -hmm. And it is still at work today, even though men and women, you know, Nimrod, Nimrod went the way of all the earth. It's appointed unto man once to die, mm -hmm. right? Um, he's gone. People move off the scenes, but the spirits remain. Yeah. And they are still at work. They're still doing the same things that they have been doing, right? Okay. Another thing about this woman is um, the wealth part. You, you know, uh, when it described her and it says that she was decked with gold, that's in verse 4. Gold and precious stones and pearls. Uh, 17.4. See, she's decked out with gold and, and precious stones like diamonds, rubies, sapphires, emeralds, all of them. And uh, pearls. Don't leave out the pearls. If you look over in um, Revelation 18, 18.3 it, says, All the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Um, and um, about halfway through that verse, it says, And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Do you see that? She's, she has a greed about her, uh, a lusting for those things that are fabulously wealthy, that kind of thing. Um, verses 11 through 14, it, it talks about how the merchants... This is Revelation 7 or, or 18, 11, on down through verse 14. All manner of precious thing, merchandise of, of gold, it says in uh, verse 12, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, all, all, all kinds of things, even down to slaves and souls of men. Uh, 